David Sirota is on the line with us. He's the host of the David Sirota Show on AM760, a syndicated columnist, contributor to Salon.com, author of several books, including his latest, Back to Our Future, How the 1980s Explain the World We Live in Now, Our Culture, Our Politics, Our Everything, his website, davidsirota.com, and uh, Twitter, at David Sirota. David, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. Hey, last night, uh, by the way, on uh, The Big Picture, I had the fellow, the, the filmmaker who did the, the movie on Finland, and on the air during the show, I said, I want to give David Sirota credit for turning me on to this, uh, this topic. It, that was a great piece you wrote, and uh, thanks for informing me about it. He was a great guest, and, and uh, it was very, very insightful. Thanks but, very much. But uh, it, it, moving along to another column that you wrote, <laughs> which uh, is uh, pretty astounding, the Department of Defense or the Department of Homeland Security are now taking very seriously something other than underwear bombers <laughs> and, and, and whatnot. And instead of groping us and, and maybe as they start talking about things being inside our bodies, moving to the KY jelly phase, uh, they're going to instead start inspecting every electronic device we have when we go through an airport. Is there spyware in that iPod? Well, here's the issue. The the issue is, and and it's it's a it's a national security threat that actually touches on our international trade policy. Those two things don't usually we don't usually think of them together. But last week, at a little noticed a congressional hearing, the Department of Homeland Security acknowledged uh, that it has experienced and has evidence of uh, technology coming into our country, both hardware and software, that may be preloaded with malware, spyware, and other national security compromising uh, uh, pr provisions and, and, and technologies. And, and before you think that, that, that this is just about, oh, well, you know, uh, the Chinese-made iPhone will have problems with, uh, with Angry Birds or its hipstamatic camera, this is a, poses real national security uh, problems in the sense that many of our governmental agencies, many of our national security agencies, uh, purchase hardware and computer software that because our, our economy is so focused on job outsourcing, ultimately is sourced in foreign countries where there is not necessarily supply chain security. Now, this may sound like a total conspiracy theory and the like, but let's not forget, too, that one of the major sources, increasingly, of that computer hardware and that software is China, a country whose government has been very, very focused on researching, developing, and implementing uh, malware, spyware, uh, censorship programs uh, that uh, come embedded in computer technology and in computer in software. Order to, in order to monitor their own people. Exactly, exactly. But that research to develop that technology, uh, to develop that software, uh, it's, it's logical to assume that they're researching all sorts of ways uh, of maximizing uh, technology for the purposes uh, of, their own, of their own use, wh whatever that use may be, whether it's uh, spying on their own citizens or spying on us. It's been a few years since I was inside the offices of any of our national security agencies. Back when I used to do uh, marketing consulting, I've, I've done consulting work for the NSA, for the CIA, for the, the Army Intelligence, for, you know, yeah, mostly for corporations, but, but I've been in those, in those offices and in those buildings. And the, the computers that the average person is using, not necessarily the, the super ones or whatever that the, you know, the, the hot shots are using, I, I, you know, I wasn't dealing with them, I was dealing with the low-level folks were off-the-shelf computers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, back, back you know, a decade and a half ago, two decades ago when I was doing this work, it was mostly, uh, frankly, IBM computers. And they were, as I recall, mostly made in the United States. Is it safe to assume now, if you were to walk through the, the bowels of the NSA or CIA building, that you'd see, like you would see in most major American corporations, a whole bunch of computers from Dell or Apple or, uh, you know, some other company that is manufacturing in China? I think it is safe to to assume that, and I think this whole idea of supply chain vulnerability is a very real one, one that we don't think very much about. Are we? Is the fact that our trade policy uh, ha, in incentivizing corporations to go offshore and make high technology products offshore is that creating a supply chain vulnerability that has us inadvertently importing uh, national security compromising uh, technology, the, so technology they, that we don't even see? Right. So if they've if they if 
in China, well, or or for example, if if the Apple computer that I bought from, mm-hmm. you know, you, you ordered it at Apple.com, and you can actually track it from Shanghai right to your house, you know, by FedEx, and they literally ship from China right into the United States, and uh, or not necessarily Shanghai, it's some other city, Shenzhou or whatever it is, and if they had put a back door in that to say, okay, you know, we want to be able to keep track of this guy, or if uh, you know, A, it could be, you know, we talked about the NSA, CIA, whatnot. But what if it was like, you know, a power company? I mean, it, it, it's extremely likely that the for-profit corporations that run our power grids are going to be buying the cheapest computers that they can get out there, which will be the off-the-shelf things that are made in China. And there's backdoors in those where if the Chinese decided to declare cyber war on us, and, and we just, uh, just in the news in the last day or two was this thing about how China now has satellite capability where they can monitor Asia six, month, six, six hours out of the day. It used to be zero a decade ago, then they went to three hours. Now they're up to about the same uh, ability to see everything on the ground with spy satellites that we have. Um, it's, it's almost like, you know, are they defensive or are they preparing for something? And if they decided that they wanted to shut down half the power grids in America, the way that apparently the Israelis and us conspired together to shut down Ahmadinejad's um, uh, centrifuges that were refining uranium by inserting a, uh, a worm into his computers, that we might already be preloaded. We might already be pre-suckered. In fact, for that matter, I mean, we can't build a battleship now without software and hardware, excuse me, hardware, which contains, you know, e- in EEPROM form and things, software that's made in China. We can't that, build a cruise missile without stuff from China. That, that's exactly right. And that's exactly the, the security vulnerability. The U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission recently reported just a few months ago uh, that, it, that they are worried about what, what they call kill switches implanted in Pentagon systems that control, for instance, our arsenal. Let's say we need to deploy this or that uh, piece of military hardware, uh, and China has a kill switch. And again, I want to be clear. People need to remember, this is not conspiracy theory. This is the Department of Homeland Security last week testifying at a commission, at a, at a congressional hearing, uh, that it has evidence that this kind of thing has happened and may be happening. And it, it no, really... This is not speculation. It's not speculation by a couple of talk show hosts. This <laughs> no, is the DHS no. saying it's already happened. And I should also add that uh, top members of Congress are well aware of it as well. Back uh, a year ago, Ike Skelton, uh, the congressman uh, who is a is on the Defense Committee, uh, he inserted a provision that got very little attention, se- Section 806 of the Defense Defense Authorization Act, which authorizes the Secretary of Defense, at least for the Department of Defense, to do a review of what kind of vulnerabilities the Pentagon uh, may already be susceptible to. This is a question of whether we, because of our free trade policy, because of an economy that is now organized around outsourcing our high-tech jobs, whether one of the downsides of that, beyond losing a high-paying jobs, is that we are inadvertently importing a national security vulnerability into our country and spreading it ubiquitously throughout our country. It's, it's insane. And it's, this is even worse than if when we went into World War II, we didn't have the, the capacity to manufacture tanks, airplanes, and, and parachutes. We at least, you know, we made nylon stockings in this country, and so we turned them into parachute factories. We no longer do that. But this is like, they could be here already. They could have won already, and we don't even know. David Sirota, uh, davidsirota.com. David, thank you.